This is South Florida Today. And welcome back, everybody. Most Americans don't have the faintest idea of what it's like to live in a society where there is no freedom at all, where you can be taken from your bed in the middle of the night for no reason and imprisoned for your ideas. In his gripping new book, Dying to Get Here, Matt Lawrence tells the real-life story of thousands of Cuban refugees who have braved death to escape from a tyrannical regime to come to this country and the freedoms it offers. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Bob. Nice now, to be here. Uh, and we're, we're glad you are here. This book is fictional, but, the way I see it, based on fact. The, the book was based on my experience uh, working as director of special projects for Freedom Flight International back in the early 90s. Uh, a friend of mine who was a pilot asked me to come up and fly with him. I have a knowledge of the water. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, he wanted me to go up and help him search for these rafters. Uh, my first mission changed me forever and uh, resulted in me leaving a career with Florida Power and Light and cashing in my 401k to help fund Freedom Flight to go out and save Cuban rafters. Now, for those who have been watching this story, and of course it's a continuing story in South Florida over many decades, uh, we think in terms of people searching for, for uh, rafters, Brothers to the Rescue. Absolutely. Uh, there were many groups that flew, Brothers to Rescue being the most famous. Um, there was the Cuban American Pilots Association, the Rafters Rescue Legion out of Key West, and of course Freedom Flight. And many of the groups actually flew in concert with each other to increase coverage. Uh, ultimately, we know that Brothers to the Rescue paid the ultimate price in losing right. two aircraft. Now, when you decided to write a book based on your experience, why did you decide to make it a novel with fictional characters? Well, I originally started to write a book about a family that I had met at the House of Transit in Key West when I was volunteering down there one day, but everyone that was reading the, the beginnings of the book told me that I had to create the family's beginning when they left. So I ultimately had to take it to fiction because I didn't meet any rafters in Cuba right. to understand their life. So I actually did interviews with people at the House of Transit that came across and created the Robana family. Now, you, you, you give some pretty stark descriptions of what can happen and what does happen to families who live in Cuba. Where, where did you get the information? Directly from Cuban rafters, people that I actually interviewed and met at the House of Transit. The uh, little boy at the end of the book, and I won't give away the ending, uh, was actually someone that I actually met. And the day that I spent with him down there at the House of Transit was just uh, emotional and impactful. Give us a preview, if you would, as we would, uh, for example, a movie trailer uh, as to what we can expect when we read the book. Well, um, a good movie trailer would be what we saw most often, which would be a plane spotting something in the water from 500 feet and doing a rapid descent to 50 feet and preparing an airdrop where we would put out survival gear. Now, we're looking at some pictures right now. Are these pictures you took? Uh, these are pictures taken by Captain Steve Walton, who actually flew with us, and he was our chief pilot. That is an empty, and that is the beginning of the book, where we would come across suspecting that we found freedom seekers and ultimately come across a raft that had items floating in the bottom of it and nobody on it, and they were literally tombstones at sea. Ooh. Uh, the this is obviously the other kind of ending to the, the story. The barrel raft. Um, you, they would make rafts of anything that they could, and this particular gentleman was jumping up and down so hard when we came across that we ultimately went up to a higher altitude. But to come across and see people floating on barrels with a motor on the back of the raft, you can see the prop. It was just amazing to see them just get off. That's an old Soviet Union uh, single-cylinder outboard motor, and they'll do anything to get here, including use those oars that you see there. Uh, you brought an oar here. Why don't you take this out and tell us what this is and where you got it from? This, this particular oar was a gift from Arturo Cobo at the House of Transit. Um, it's one off, off a raft that actually made it here, and I have some other parts. And recently in the Miami Herald, I saw an article where they said that there were no real rafts left, that people had lost them after the House of Transit closed. So this is one of the true testimonials to freedom, where you can see it's just a rough-hewn piece of wood put together with a couple of bolts and a, a plywood yeah. uh, paddle. And nothing matches, but nothing it works. Nothing matches and it works. And it's just an amazing, amazing piece of decorum in my home. <laughs> now, you obviously, how long did you do this? Were you out there actually in, in the sky? Approximately two years. My first flight was in 1992, shortly after Hurricane Andrew came through. And my first re uh, save occurred out on Elbow Key Light. Uh, where we found a family. Uh, I left Florida Power and Light December 10th of 1993 and committed to fly and, and ultimately when uh, the policy was changed in the, uh, 1994, we ceased flying in August after the mass exodus when Castro opened right. the doors. Did you ever face personal danger during this period? I never thought that we faced personal danger, but ultimately now I think we did. Flying 50 feet off the water at 125 miles an hour to drop a package is not something that pilots do every day, and I was blessed to be flying with some excellent, excellent uh, pilots. But um, 
ultimately at the end here to see people shot down over international waters, I assume now that the risk was quite different. You're not Cuban, I, I take it. I'm a Florida native like you. Uh, you. You obviously were exposed to Cuban culture a long time ago. I remember seeing children come into the classroom with name tags on, fearful and not speaking any English. I remember bomb shelters being built in the Miami Gardens area where I grew up, where people were afraid of the missile crisis, and ultimately through the 70s and 80s, the Mariel boat lift, and I ended up involved now flying. Matt Lawrence, thanks very much. I know you're, uh, your book, it looks like it's going to be a movie. It, Good luck with that it. Way. Thank Good you. It's available it. on Amazon. Again, the book is called Dying to Get Here, a story of coming to America, available on Amazon.com. Thanks for being here.